Hello. So, last night, I made a video in which I speculated concerning why some people might be suicidal or why they might be going out and using a drug that they've heard is killing other people, which I would categorize as being suicidal, but uh, some people don't. Uh, that video turned into a half hour video. Uh, I have a very hard time keeping it short. Uh, I guess I missed, I missed my mark. I should have been a preacher. But that said, uh, I'll try to do a shorter version right here, right now. So, as I said in long form in the previous video, uh, you know, there's, it may be that a person is looking for a particular thought environment or a particular set of social norms that don't currently exist uh, in, in their surroundings. Uh, at least that's been the case with me. Uh, that I, I have really been despondent about the fact that people don't think the way that they used to think. Uh, and when, when a conversation moves towards some grim reality, you know, you start out just with a topic and then you go through the various logical twists and turns and then you get to some ugly truth, some grim reality and people want to shut down and all of a sudden they can't reason anymore, you know, and, uh, I don't think that emotional people really realize that their emotions and the uh, social norms that, that we adopt in order to satisfy their emotions can actually imprison somebody who likes to think deeply, who likes to address grim realities once they become pertinent to the conversation. Uh, and so that said, uh, I said I keep this one shorter than the one from yesterday. Uh, so let me see if I can explain this matter in just a few more minutes. Uh, make this less than a 10 minute video. But you see, I, I think that sometimes people just get to a place, as I have, where they, they just don't relate to the way that society currently thinks and in some cases the old-fashioned thinkers are actually the better thinkers and uh, of course I have my biases uh, I admit that uh, that's one of the things that the younger people tend not to do uh, when they when they assert their views uh, and oh man let me see how else can I explain this matter but like I said yesterday uh, you know I, I'm really into the Bible I'm really into God and I'm aware of various unattractive scriptures that make him out to be a dictator or the God of necessary evils uh, who has actually created different evil things that, like the forbidden fruit uh, and who has told us in Isaiah 45, 7, I form light and create darkness, I make good and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Uh, and so when I'm around people who, who uh, come with their preconceived notions of what they want to believe and they reject the knowledge that's presented to them in much the same way that re Republican politicians reject the science around global warming then yes I, I do find that to be quite frustrating and as I've acknowledged in the previous video as well uh, yes I do feel it's not that I don't feel it's that I'm not emotional there's a difference uh, I feel very strongly about wanting people to address any and all 
truths that are pertinent to an issue that we're trying to resolve, whether it's homelessness or trying to understand God or it's trying to understand uh, what created the, the Trump fiasco. Uh, when I talk about people having voted based on their feelings and their emotions rather than their rationale, and that having given us Trump, people want to deflect the issue and say that he fooled us all. And and I tell them, look, you know, there's an old expression. You can fool all of the people some of the time. You can fool some of the people all of the time. But you can't fool all of the people all of the time. And he ran a 17-month campaign. And he said a lot of stuff during those 17 months. From June 2015 to uh, November of 2016 and I think there's more to the issue than him just having fooled a lot of people but folk don't want to accept that they don't want to accept a number of different truths uh, as a homeless advocate I've pointed out the colossal failures of DC government how that they started working on the homeless issue in 2004 they had a 10-year plan for ending all DC homelessness getting down to where the only homeless people there would be are those who just recently became homeless I mean that that's a given it, it's not something that I think they stated but it's a given uh, people's houses burned down uh, you know other things happen that make you homeless uh, and, and so that said I point out that in 2018 we we're down to 6,904 and that is a glitch pattern uh, and, it, and people don't want to address it from that perspective they just want to pat each other on the back even when things aren't going well and and if you even in a calm tone of voice and a respectful tone of voice point out the systemic problems and they just call you a naysayer and they don't want to hear you and that sort of thing but that brand of thinking is something I just don't relate to and you know we, we have these long-standing problems these long-standing failures uh, and folk just don't want to have the hard conversations uh, for me, those conversations actually aren't hard. I actually long to have those conversations, but many people find uh, certain conversations to be difficult. Uh, I chalk it up to their emotion. Uh, so sometimes you need an unemotional person or someone who has very little emotion to actually lead the conversation so that we can move toward a solution and not just come back itching and bitching and talking about the same problem a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, and and uh, but I I'm not sure if the emotional camp will ever really fully understand how that the social norms that we adopt in order to satisfy your emotions uh, prevent some very relevant logical things from being adequately discussed. And, and then what that leads to is the rational, intelligent, unemotional person having to live by the rules of the emotionals, which oftentimes means not saying things that need to be said, and not being brutally honest. And, uh, you know, that's... So that basically adds up to me not relating to a lot of the people around me these days. I, I do see that I relate rather well to those who are at least a few years older than myself. I'm 49 right now. Uh, when I speak to people in their 50s and 60s and 70s, then uh, I'm able to relate rather well to, to people in, in those age brackets. But uh, folk who are considerably younger than myself I mean, even five years younger, not young enough to be my child, but even five years younger, uh, they're very difficult to speak to. There, there's, uh, then of course there's that gray area. So between the ages of 45 and 
52, 53. You know, there's there's that gray area where I might get along well with you, I might not. But uh, anyway, I I have sought to create a thought environment around me in which uh, people have certain basic tools of critical thinking. And, and I can always know that uh, as we begin to talk about some very important issues, they're not going to clam up on me when we get to the hard stuff. Okay, and so that, that kind of translates into my thoughts about employers. I said yesterday, and I'll say it again, that... Uh, there's a story of a certain Gentile woman, I think she was a Syrophoenician woman, who came to Jesus and she wanted healing for either herself or her daughter. I don't remember exactly. But uh, Jesus basically called her a bitch as he told her, uh, I shall not take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she had a good comeback on him. And she said, well, even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Uh, and so she was implying that all she needed was a crumb of his power not the entire meal yeah and uh, so he said well your faith has made you whole and she got what she wanted even though Jesus had tried to avoid doing something for a Gentile uh, and that's another grim reality but that said um, I I would say that when an employer acts like Jesus and says I shall not take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. I'm not going to take a job that I think should go to this person who's never been homeless and give it to a homeless person. Then a good comeback would be, well, hey, you know, if you won't give me a job, then I'll continue to be homeless. So you're actually creating the problem that you complain about. You know, then I would hope that the employer would immediately do like Jesus did and say, hey, you know, that, that was a pretty good comeback. You know, your faith has made you whole. I'm going to give you what you want. Uh, can you be here tomorrow at 9 a.m.? But uh, anyway, you know, I'm just kind of at a place where I look at the social norms and the basic underpinnings of how people think these days, and I just don't relate. And, and that's a large part of why, you know, I just haven't exited homelessness but then of course there is the fact that I advocate for solutions to homelessness and that actually does a little bit to prevent me from getting out because I don't get paid for what I do but I am committed to what I do and after so many years of doing it I'm also looking for that major success uh, so that's part of the puzzle too uh, it's it's not just the fact that I don't relate to how people think these days, but but there's also the fact that I am trying to finish the job I started, even if I'm not getting paid for it, because I'm committed. Uh, and and so these are some of the things that don't really get talked about in our society, even when people try to guess why I'm homeless. You know then. Most of them would, wouldn't even want, want to uh, hear that explanation that I just gave because it doesn't fit into any of the multiple choice uh, options that they're used to. You know, either you're homeless because you're mentally ill or you're homeless because you're physically ill and lost your job while you were in the hospital or you're homeless by choice, you know, and they, they have this short list of options. And when you say something that falls outside of that short list and then their minds just go haywire and they don't know how to make heads and tails of it. They, they try to fit you into their box as they ostensibly try to understand you, you know, and uh, so that's that's the more of how people think these days that just doesn't work for me. But I said 10 minutes and it's almost 15. So I'll stop there.